Good morning, everyone. I'm Connie Myers with CKM Solutions Group, and I am so happy to have these two beautiful women on my panel with us, with us today. Um, I have Lori, Lori Namazi sitting right next to me and Tracy Hawkins down at the end. Uh, Lori, why don't you give them a, little, a little bit about your company? Sure. Uh, I run a brokerage in Southern California, and in addition to that, I am a consultant and advisor for independent brokers, and my company is Namazi Real Estate Resources, and I have the privilege of working with brand new brokers and helping them get their business started and focus on running a compliant operation and we spend a lot of time talking about risk management topics and how they can best protect themselves and their company. Perfect. So I'm happy to be here. And then we have Tracy Hawkins, the safety lady. Uh, Tracy, just a brief about your company, what you do. I am a former real estate agent and I've spent the last 26 years uh, traveling the country teaching real estate agents and brokers, managers and owners how to live and work safely. I teach them how to make more money doing so, how to reduce their liability. Perfect. And at CKM Solutions Group, we have a brand new, well, it's, not, it's about six months old now, certification called Crisis Knowledge Management, where we educate people on realtors on how to be prepared and then they have the opportunity to go out and teach a consumer course that they can to help their communities be better prepared so they go out to chambers they can go out to civic organizations they can go out to schools and churches and what that does is make them more visible so it not only are you giving back and helping your community but you're also helping your business and i would like to start this conversation one of the topics that i talk about in the certification is active shooters and mass and mass killings and unfortunately 2021 has proven to be a very bad year already in march and april alone there were six mass shootings all of which were in commercial businesses so um if you have a business you need to really pay attention to what we're going to be talking about today uh there were 36 deaths from mass shootings and that's not counting uh, there's different definitions for mass shootings. Uh, the FBI and, and a couple other organizations that track this stuff, uh, it's three people are more killed, not counting the shooter. In other uh, other people or organizations, they use four or more. So, and some include gangs and, and family situations and others don't. So we're gonna be, the statistics I just gave you are from the FBI and they, they use three or more. So um, just to give you an idea, I think it's really critically important um, that we understand that we can be at risk, whether we are a business owner or whether we're a customer or an employee. As a matter of fact, I think it's really critical. Anytime we go out anymore, I personally know two people that were in malls or two groups of people that were in malls when there were, the sirens went off that there was a shooter in, in the built in the in the mall. My one was my sister in mm -hmm. LA. They were in, she was in a mall with her friend. The good news is they were at the jewelry's counter and the front door for the, the department store they were in was right next to the exit. So they when the siren went off they ran out the door. Mm -hmm. uh, my other friend in Texas was not quite so fortunate. She and her daughter were in a department store mm -hmm. and they I had to duck into a storage for clothing and lock the door. Um, it turned out that the one in the in LA was was actually there was a shooter. Uh, they didn't kill anybody. They it was just it was must have been some kind of a gang thing or something. Uh, the one in Texas actually um, turned out to be a false alarm, fortunately. But they started to come out and they didn't. They were told it wasn't safe yet. So it's it, this, the one statistic that I wanted to bring up here, just one second, let me pull it up so I can give it to you. Um, in my course, I talk about how many are government or uh, places that have had killings and uh, shootings and how many are commercial. So 43.7% of mass shootings and active shooter incidents are held in commercial properties. Uh, in education, and this is a terrible number, it's 26.6% happen in our schools. Um, uh, so just think of that, the, that's almost, that's 25% oh, of our kids at this point have had to experience that kind of thing. 
uh, government buildings is 6.9 percent. So I, I think it's really important that we understand what we need to do. So where, if you are visiting, let's say you're visiting like the mall, there was a mall, there was, or not a mall, but a grocery store. There was a FedEx building. Uh, there were spas. I don't remember the other three off the top of my head, but they were all commercial property. So when you were walking into a restaurant or we're walking into a movie theater or we're walking into some place where we need to protect ourselves and understand, uh, we need to just stop for a second, just stop for a second and look around. And if you see something, you make sure you say something to somebody. But as you're looking around, most shooters are going to come through the front door. They're not going to come through the back door. So pay attention to where that back door is. Make sure that you find the exits. Just glance around the room when you walk in. I know some people that won't even sit with their back to the front door because they want to be aware of who's walking in. Um, make sure also that if you if you if something is happening, don't worry about your purse. Don't worry about anything. Just get up and get out as quick as possible. Um, if others are trying to get out, if you can help them, great. If not, just get out. And then if there's others coming in, make sure you warn them that uh, there's there's a shooter inside. Um, if escape isn't possible, make sure that you hide and stay as quiet as you possibly can, trying to stay out of the sight of the shooter. If there's a closet or something we could run into, uh, go into that. But don't hide in groups because that just makes an easier target for pe for the, the shooter. So try to not be more than one or two people. If you're in a room and you've locked the door and you've turned out the lights, Make sure that you turn off your phones, even off of vibrate, because the shooter might be able to hear the vibration of your phone and know where you are. Um, so make sure you silence any electronic devices. And then when it's safe, call 911, because, uh, and then make sure you get out as quickly as possible. That's the number one key thing that I want to say here. So uh, Tracy, I'd like to have you talk a little bit about um, being safe. Right. And one thing that I do, and thank you for the information, Connie, um, that's eye opening. And um, one thing I'd like to do is I like to focus on small businesses, especially brokers, um, brokerages on how to prevent these situations or how to even deal with them. And I have a workshop where I teach them all things safety. But this is a key component. And the net news headline tells you why um, I get an opportunity to work with people who do this day in and day out. And I incorporate that into my training. Um, there's a company called Thrive Pro Solutions, and they talk about learning the ABCs of a workplace of violence, um, a shooting situation. So A is for avoid. So that means avoid the situation right up front. And we'll talk about that, how to do that, the assessment process. And then they talk about barricade. There should be a plan in place before a shooting occurs. So everyone, this sounds awful. I remember as a child doing fire drills at school. Now we're doing um, shooting drills, um, but it's a necessary part of the business is it's the world we live in now. So every office should first and foremost have a safety team. And the safety team is the one responsible for putting together these safety plans, as well as making sure that safety stays top of mind. And that means they're reporting every team meeting, every sales meeting. They're the ones saying, hey, I need five minutes of your time. Here's the topic this week. We're going to talk about workplace shootings this week, or we're going to talk about disgruntled customers this week, or whatever the situation is, or safety in the field. So it needs to always be ingrained top of mind. And most of you all know that September's Real Estate Safety Month, safety needs to be more than just one month. So have a team in place, and you need to always talk about it. So have a drill. What would we do? And I call it the what if game. What if someone comes in the front door with a gun? What's the next step? So that means that the most important person in the office, most of the time, is the person at the front desk. They're the ones who are going to see what's happening first. There needs to be a plan in place. How will they contact everyone else and let them know there's a problem? And what will they do? More importantly, the people in the office need to know if there is a, a shooter in the building, where do we go? This is where it's important to identify a room or a space in your office that you can all go into, just like the fire drill, go in there, close the door, barricade it, put something furniture, move everything in front of the door, lock it. And that's so very important. So you have to identify these things before there's a problem. And C is counter. That means be ready to use whatever weapons you need in order to survive it. So that means look for um, the flagpole that could be a weapon or a heavy piece of equipment could be a weapon. So you need to be prepared to to basically fight um, and as a survive. And that's where you do whatever it takes to come out alive. So no matter what that looks like, but the Prakati, 
the most important thing I have to say is there has to be a plan in place before you get in that situation. So um, also think about SEPTED. And that's um, using the environment for surveillance as well as security. So you need to know it's crime prevention through environmental design. So if you don't know it, you need to learn it. That means setting up your office space from the outside to the inside, using what's there to make it harder for criminals to be successful. The outside needs to look like it's occupied and you need to have a clear route to get out in case of an emergency. You need to have lighting in place. You need to have the proper locks in place. So there's a whole list of um, things that everyone needs to learn how to do in, in case of an emergency. And finally, probably the most important thing is to assess the situation. And this is something that I got from Thrive where they're saying actually if you see something, say something. So look around and if you see something that looks like it's questionable, don't try to be the polite person and says, I, I don't wanna offend that person. You know, they're wearing a big coat and it's in the um, 100 degrees outside range. You need to be the one to speak up, say something, contact the authorities, contact your team leader, your safety team leader, who has already put a plan in place. And that's part of what I do is to help you put a plan in place so that you know what to do in an emergency situation. Thank you, Tracy. That's really, really good information. So Lori, what are the risks? There's so much risk. You know, our, our number one job from our real estate commission is to supervise our agents. And, you know, we always put that in the context of the transaction, but this industry has evolved so much. And now there are other things we need to be paying attention to. We needed to start being a, paying attention to their social media. We needed to start paying attention to how they were following the COVID protocols. And safety is a topic that we don't cover very well in our industry. In order for us to properly supervise, we have to have a plan. We have to have procedures. We have to have policies. And it's, it's so important that we are able as brokers to demonstrate that we are doing the job. We are supervising and we are training. And so I'm working with Tracy to develop a plan that brokers can use because, you know, it's easy to say, well, our policy is, you know, if there's a problem, call 911. That's not enough. And, you know, in the news recently, a few weeks ago, as a matter of fact, there was a, a shooting in California in, in a city that's maybe 20 minutes away from where I live and work. And it turns out it was a shooting in a real estate office, a very small real estate office, but nonetheless, it was a real estate office. And so, you know, other things happens and you kind of lose track of details. So I don't know if they found out the motive. I don't know if it was an agent, um, if he didn't get paid or who knows, who knows at this point, but it really brought it home that we're not immune to this happening in our offices. And when we are working in our offices without having that procedure in place, that plan in place, you know, this barricade and counter, um, there's so much that we, we need to do to protect our agents. And if we don't, then we are liable. So if we have an office environment, not only is our job to supervise their transactions, but it's to make them safe. And we are not vulnerable, we're, we're not immune to civil lawsuits if somebody is killed on our watch. I, I think that's such an important point. And, and as far as I think, it's, it's like, you know, you're almost, um, it's not good yet either way. You know, you, you, you know if people are carrying guns or not carrying guns, that's a big, we talked about concealed weapons on our last talk, Lori, and not knowing what how to react to that because as a as a brokerage um if you tell your agents that they can't carry guns then and something happens to them or there is a situation then you're liable if they are carrying a gun and something happens you could also be liable with that as well so it's, it's a very uh and that's true with any business not just brokerages but any business so i think it's really important that you do i mean both Tracy and Lori said exactly, you have to have a plan. You have to be prepared. And it's really, it's really sad that in this day and time that we have to even be having these conversations. But unfortunately, it's a reality. Um, I think, you know, it's getting to the point where we all know something that's happened somewhere or we know somebody that was involved. 
And so it's really critical to to really understand the importance. Uh, Tracy, tell us a little bit about so your tell us a little bit about your training. Well, I have uh, created and okay, so this was in response to a real estate agent being victimized, actually murdered, and her family said, "We're suing the company." We're suing the company for negligence because they did not put any kind of safety training in place. So an aha moment um, came to me. And that's when I said, I've got to teach leadership, brokers, managers, and owners how to not get sued successfully. Anyone can sue. So my goal was to create training programs uh, with experts like Connie, like Lori, who can come in and say, hey, this is what you need to know to reduce your liability and to not get sued. But more importantly, I talk about the safe work practices. Here's what needs to happen on a daily basis in order to keep your office safe, the equipment inside, the people inside, not just the ages, but the people. So this training translates not only just to real estate companies, but small to medium sized companies who can't afford a secure security department. I say, let us be your security department. Let us come in, assess the situation and tell you what you need. Let's talk about what to do in case of a disaster. Let's talk about safe work practices. Let's talk about how to reduce your liability, your risk reduction. So that's what we do. And what scares me, um, it, Connie and Lori, is that sometimes, and Lori said it perfectly, you know, most people don't even know where to go. They don't know who to talk to. That scares me because if you have someone popping in saying, oh, I can do that for you, let me do an assessment for you or let me do a plan and they don't have the credentials, they don't have the background, then that opens you up, like Connie said, to more liability. Imagine whoever you entrust your safety and security planning to. Imagine them, if something goes wrong in your business, someone gets hurt, imagine that person on the witness stand. Can they stand up? So they need to be able to save uh, from a place of authority. This is what I advise this company to do. This company followed my rules. They did what I said. They did everything right. You know, so imagine that kind of defense. So that's why I said get people on board. And then one thing I wanted to say is so often you hear um, whenever there's a crime, a mass shooting, you they interview people and everyone says, oh, we had no idea. No one told us. We didn't know what to look for. Absolutely wrong. Every single time you're going to wait the next set of interviews, they will say, well, I did notice this or yeah, he did say that or she did that. So there are always signs. So that's why being proactive is more important. So that's why this training is key before something happens. And we're in a society, I've been doing this a long time, where we wait for something to happen and then we react. And like Lori talked about the shooting in the in California at the real estate company, um, one thing that prevented the shooter from getting in is because it was hard to get in, um, the whole setup. So that's where SEPTED comes into play. That's why you need someone on your team to talk about that, how to use the environment around you, how to make it harder for someone to get in who doesn't belong there, but still be opening and allowing for your customers to get there. And then finally, a part of my training is talking about the technology that exists. Um, and that's something that I, I am fascinated with technology. And so I know that there are, there are products and programs out there. People have no idea. There's a company called I Follow Alerts. And what they did is they created a safety app for this very purpose in hospitals and in schools and now in the real estate industry. And it's a simple app that allows you to go on camera live and say, hey, here's what's going on. Here's my location. And you can also use it to uh, broad mass broadcast messages saying we have a problem. Here's where it is, you know, avoid this area. So they help get the word out. So I'm all about building a team around you and also having, I guess I, I'm not a sports girl, but having a quarterback, someone like the three of us who can say, let's put our heads together. Let's assess your situation, your vulnerabilities, and let's get a plan in place to help you reduce your liability. Thank you. So Lori, for when it comes to your risk management business, um, you work you work a lot with brokers. Uh, what are what are the some of the things that you find that you really can help them with? What are some of the the situations that you come across that uh, you, we we want to let people know about? Well, a lot of times a new broker just doesn't know what what they don't know. You know, if you're a salesperson, you go to your manager when you have questions, when you have problems. When you are the broker, it's all on you. And so, a lot of what I assist brokers with is not just transactional questions, but also how they implement different procedures in their business that will either help them or hurt them. And so sometimes they'll hear things out in the industry and they'll say, well, that sounds like a good idea. Well, maybe it is a good idea, but let's talk about the pros and the cons. What are you maybe overlooking 
when you want to implement you know some new cool feature is there any risk to your company so we look at we look at it from different points of view and, and because I worked at a very large brokerage for many many years I have the optics of a, you know that huge lens of this large company and so many different crazy scenarios that that could come up but I also run a small brokerage so I have that detailed um, lens that is focused on just a small company without all of the the ancillary resources available so it really covers a wide spectrum because as a as an independent broker you're running a company it doesn't matter what size company you are running you're still running a company and sometimes it's a matter of human resource issues they don't know how to properly employ people so it's a it's a wide spectrum and it's it's really something that's my passion i enjoy it very much helping these these young brokerages succeed i think you could tell from all three of us that we're very passionate about what we do um i was actually a fema inspector for seven years and also a trainer and i always wanted to write a book about for the consumer on how to be better prepared in, in a, primarily in natural disasters. But then I realized, I started looking into man-made disasters. Um, man-made disasters cost us about $33 billion every year. And it's on the rise. Natural disasters, if you look at 2015 to 2019, it was $106 billion per year on natural disasters. If you narrow it down to three years, 2017 to 2019, we're talking $152 billion per year. And that's not counting 2020. We had disasters in, in 2020 that we've never had before or is very, very rare. So we really need to take a look at how we can prepare ourselves, our businesses for both mass shootings and everything else because it's all coming into play. Power outages are on a huge increase because of the antiquity of our, our, our power grid. Just look what happened in Texas. So it's really, how's that going to affect your business? How's that going to affect your personal life? The pandemic, how has that affected all of us? So it's really critically important, which is exactly why I wrote the Crisis Knowledge Management Certification. And I wrote it because I want people to be prepared. The vision is 30 million people in five years being better prepared. So um, if you would like to check out my CKM Advisor Certification, you just go to CKM Solutions group.com and I do have a free book it's a full book that was actually number one bestseller uh, in 11 different business categories that you can download that gives you all kinds of information about how to be a good leader for your personal life as well as your business and Tracy what about you how do they find you um, I fortunately have a big platform. Um, people can, I, I'm a writer, a uh, safety expert, so you can find my articles on The Close, C-L-O-S-E, that's a real estate website. I'm a contributing writer for the National Association of Realtors, Realtor Magazine, and I'm often quoted as a safety expert on for Inman. So you can pretty much find me anywhere, um, which is good because my goal is to reach 250,000 agents this year with my safety message through all platforms, all manners and methods necessary. Plus uh, Google Tracy, the safety lady. And I have a Facebook group on in, um, real, the, the safety, so many, um, the safety and security source for real estate. And that's where I talk all things safety, all the articles, all the stories about these crimes. You can find them there and for other businesses, my safety and security source page. So I am, all over the place. <laughs> and Lori, how about you? How do we find you? Uh, so a couple different places too. So I have a website, Namazi Resources, just my last name, namaziresources.com. And uh, we do have a very active Facebook group called Nerdy Real Estate Resources. And so we'd love for people who are in the industry to, to join us in that Facebook group. Each Monday we do a coffee and compliance conversation and I cover a ton of, of compliance related issues, what's new and uh, what's changing and how can you protect yourselves as well as we just, we include a ton of different resources throughout the week to, to help all of us, all of us in the industry, whether you're a real estate agent or even an affiliate. Um, we have a lot of affiliate members too who want to be involved and um, contribute to the conversation as well. You know, one thing that we all forgot to mention that I just came to my mind, and Tracy, I know this is one of your primary points, and that is if you 
if you get the hairs on the back of your neck going up or you get the sense that there's something wrong, then act. Don't wait. She did mention, you know, don't, you know, if you see something suspicious, you know, tell somebody. But even if you just get a sense that something doesn't feel right, then do something about it. So, well, ladies, anything else you want to add or are, are we good to go? Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that everyone knows that there that the three of us are available. If you're saying, I don't know where to start or I don't want this to happen to me. You have three experts right here who are ready, willing and available, whether it's together as a group or individually. We're here for you. And um, technology resources, that's another one that I want people to know that technology does exist. Um, I mentioned the iFollow Alerts, Agent SafeWalk. Those are apps that are, to me, above and beyond the other apps. Um, companies like Thrive Pro Solutions, who can do a workplace safety plan. Um, there are so many resources out there. All I can say is let us help you. If you don't know what you don't know, let us help you. Lori, anything yeah. you want to add? I would echo that. You know, the, the risks constantly change. And so you don't have to go this alone. We're stronger together. We learn together. And, you know, don't don't be the person that sits back and, and waits for it to happen. You have to be prepared. Absolutely. Being proactive, it actually makes you resilient. You, you're able to build back better and easier, and especially if you take a look at what you can mitigate to reduce the risk. And um, I have consulting that I do also for businesses and things. So call us all in and we'll, we'll get you all set up. Okay, ladies. Well, thank you so much. I think this was a very important panel for us to bring to everybody's attention, especially considering everything that's in the news right now. Uh, so I, I think I'm sure I speak for all of us. Uh, just be safe out there. Absolutely. Be safe. Thank you. Be safe.